are counting down 10 board games that captured our attention this month at Watch It Played and discussing why each one caught our eye. These are games on our radar. Hello, I'm Paula Deming, and welcome to another special One Take Theater edition of On The Radar, where each member of the Watch It Play team turns on their cameras and shares the games currently on their minds and tables in one single take. No do-overs, just happy accidents. Our list begins with The Elephant in the Room of sorts, a game that you just know was going to end up on someone's list, Star Wars The Clone Wars. In this game, built on the pandemic games, Built on the pandemic game system, not the game system, the pandemic green system, judicious Jedi must work together to confront the onslaught of droids by moving into their spaces and engaging them in combat, utilizing dice and squad cards to deal damage and push back the threat. In between battles, players move from planet to planet, battling more droids, crushing blockades, completing missions to turn the tide of war, and facing off against iconic villains. So I'm the reason this is on the list. I fell in love with this game after I got to try it for the first time at Essen. Same thing happened with German Schweitzchen Noodle. That's how you say it. I was honestly really pleasantly surprised by how different it felt to Pandemic, and yet also like comfortingly similar due to it using the same system. It was genuinely one of the best experiences I've ever had demoing a game at a convention, uh, which has a lot to do with the people I was playing it with and the person running the demo was amazing. But the game was genuinely fun. Like, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. The only thing I could enjoy more is hearing a word about the first game that helped sponsor this episode and also figure out why my light is flickering. This episode is made possible in part by Council of Shadows from Alea and Ravensburger. Welcome you to the year 2200, where humans have traveled to the furthest reaches of the galaxy and self-driving cars are just a couple of years away, we promise. Here, on the edge of the known universe, a race for a seat in the mighty Council of Shadows is in full swing, with four civilizations vying for admission to this covert cabinet cabal. In Council of Shadows, you are one of these four civilizations. <laughs> But you didn't see that coming. And to win, you'll need to secure the strongest actions, take control of important areas, and be the first to make three quantum leaps. Because two quantum leaps is for amateurs. So follow the link in this video's description to find Council of Shadows, win the race for planets and raw materials, and then finally become part of this inscrutable alien assembly. I'm back. I've plugged my light into a new outlet. Hopefully it will stop flickering. Also, it might look different now because I might have bumped it or adjusted the amount of light without realizing it. <laughs> but here we are, number nine. Rodney's carefully curated cardboard collection commences with Critical Foundation Season 1, an RPG-style experience with a bit of a twist. Also, it's not very fair for Chaz to write in that kind of alliteration when we're doing one take, okay? The game is constructed like a television series, back to what we're actually talking about, with each of the nine episodes taking 30 minutes to play. You can take on the role of Game Master, who directs the adventure, or play as one of the characters to put yourself in the story, which takes place in a fictitious future where huge, multinational corporations have gained influence over government and the media. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Meanwhile, back in the present day, here's what Rodney had to say about the game, sponsored by Renquist Convenience Stores. Renquist Convenience Stores. The only thing we can't sell you is love. But surely our fine products can be used to fill that void in your life instead. Now, here's Rodney. I don't want to oversell this to you or to myself, but this might be the role-playing game I've always been looking for. One that would give me the confidence to run a session for my friends without a lot of prep and commitment while still delivering a solid storytelling experience. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, you show me a 60-page war game rule book, and I'm fine. Like, my heart's a flutter. But if that's for a role-playing game, <laughs> I don't know. My teeth start to hurt. It doesn't make any sense. The other thing, I always hear that with a role-playing game, you've got to block off a whole afternoon. Book off four or five hours. Who has that kind of time anymore? Not me. Not since Chaz crashed our time machine into a lake. But this provides you with a multi-part RPG experience where each session is meant to be only 30 to 60 minutes, and then you can stop and get on with your life. Or 
Keep going. I mean, maybe your time machine isn't at the bottom of a lake. Oh, and I've got to show you some of the contents that come in the game. So it comes with this GM screen. And a lot of GM screens, I find, they have all these obscure tables you might use once or twice. This has got basically 80 to 90% of the rules printed right on it. So again, if it's your first time running a role-playing session, you don't have to memorize everything. It's going to be right in front of you. And if you're having trouble, maybe with some of the storytelling, it comes with all of these cards that will show you pictures of the locations, people you're interacting with, that you can put in front of the players. Also, items to hand out. When they collect things, they can have a physical object in front of them. Name cards, just for them to put their character names on so you don't forget them. It's got other tokens to give out. It's got dice, dry erase markers, maps, and of course, all the scenarios. I'm very impressed, if you can tell. I've read through the rules. I'm itching to play, and it might even be a fun one to stream here on the channel. Monique Indivine's first pick this month is Yokai Septet, in which your goal is to capture high-scoring boss Yokai by strategically playing cards from your hand. A four-player game can be played as two versus two, or play as a three-player cutthroat game. The winner of the round scores points based on the boss yokai they captured, continuing until a specified number of points have been earned by a player. And put your earnings to good use at Rinquist Convenience Stores. Rinquist Convenience Stores, we're doing our part for inflation by raising our prices. Now, here is Monique and Naveen. Yokai Septa is one of Monique and my favorite trick-taking games of all time. Yeah, actually, we've had our copy since it was first released in 2018. And uh, one of the things that we love so much about it is the number ranges cascade across the different suits. So the only commonality that each suit has is the number seven. Mm -hmm. And so especially in a four-player game where you're playing as two teams trying to win the majority of the sevens, that gameplay can be really interesting because you also have very limited communication. Yeah, so now this new second edition apparently comes with new foil boss cards cards, as well as a four-player mode now where there is double sevens mm -hmm. uh, involved. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of chaos this is going to create and what kind of strategy that's going to change in this game. Chaz chimes in with his first nice choice. Chaz wrote that. I did ever know that Chaz wrote that I should say noise instead of nice because it rhymes with choice, sort of, but it doesn't. Anyway, his pick is Dice Forge from 2017, a game in which players craft and customize dice with removable faces. Customize your dice to make them more powerful as the game progresses. Upgrade your dice to, pro to produce, to pursue the bleh. We're not kidding, I'm, I am doing this in one take. Upgrade your dice to produce the resources you need. Skillfully manage the luck of the dice and take charge of your destiny. I played this once back when it first came out and have always been meaning to play it again, but I never got around to it. And then it eventually became buried in my gaming to-do list under the continual avalanche of other new releases and gotta triumphs. But then, ho oh, ho, I spied a table of people playing Dice Forge at an Aircon event last year, and that launched me into a new mission to finally track down a copy of this game, which I did manage to do along with its expansion. With lo along with its expansion. Words work better when you open your mouth. Now, I am looking forward to finally catching up on this game. This game that I have been looking forward to playing again for so, so long. M my only regret that it's taken me so long to track down a copy. Maybe I should have started my search by shopping at our wonderful sponsor, Renquist Convenience Stores. Renquist Convenience Stores. Oh, bad news, Jazz. Renquist Convenience Stores is no longer a sponsor. What happened? Oh, they've been purchased by our new sponsor, Renquist Superstores. Renquist Superstores. The only thing we can't sell you is love, but we are working on a love substitute. How do you intend to spice up your gaming life? Well, if you're me, which I am, then you do it by adding a little sea salt and paper. As in the next title that I picked this month, the card game Sea Salt and Paper by Bombix. Okay, look, I'll let you in on two secrets. First, Rinquist Superstores is responsible for the majority of the planet's annual mass plant and animal extinction. Second, if Bruno Catala's name is on a box, I'm immediately interested. So I definitely wanted to try this one when I saw it at Essen. It's a set collection game where you can choose to end a round once you have a certain number of points. But if you keep going just one more turn, you might get some more points and beat out your opponent when you call for scoring to happen and make a bet that they can't beat you. But if they end the round first, you just might be the one losing all the points you've collected. Delightfully tense and delightful to look at, featuring origami art with a nautical theme. 
just like Rinquist Superstores. Rinquist Superstores. We may have harvested the seeds to exhaustion, but whale meat doesn't grow on trees. And believe us, we tried. How many cooks are too many cooks? Well, if you're Matthew's first pick this month, Too Many Cooks, designed by Reiner Knizia, then the answer may be that too many cooks are too, too many cooks, too many. At first, this may appear to be nothing more than a standard trick-taking game, but instead of everybody playing one card and seeing who wins the trick, everybody takes turns adding cards until the total sum is 10 or more. And then the player who put the total over the top takes the whole pile and never looks back. So if you're interested in finding a new copy of Too Many Cooks, I'm sorry, but I think you'll find that that is rather impossible. So give up now, okay? There you go. It's refreshing, isn't it? However, you are also in luck because it's coming back under a new name, Foodie Forest. Now listen carefully and take notes if you have to. This is one of the best trick-taking card games ever made. Did you write that down? Because it's categorically true. It took me a long time to hunt down a copy of it, and I had to pay way more than I should have for it. Honestly, the word for that is shameful. But now you don't have to make those type of mistakes because you can get a new version. Yay, good for you. I'm thrilled that it's being reprinted so that you can get it without paying an arm and a leg for it, which is just an expression, of course. There's no way I paid an actual arm and a leg for it. Not with the price of kidneys nowadays. That's where the money is. And while Matthew, like Rinquist Superstores, takes a break to undergo a thorough criminal investigation, here's a word from the other game that helped make this episode possible. This episode is also brought to you by Unmatched Houdini vs. The Genie from Restoration Games. Unmatched is the critically acclaimed best-selling game of tactical combat between unlikely opponents. And now, with Houdini vs. The Genie, Unmatched has its most magical set yet. The world's greatest illusionist uses masterful effects to confound his opponents, but The Genie brings raw power to the game, but will wind up back in its lamp if he pushes himself too far. As with every unmatched set, these heroes can face off against fighters from other sets as well, making it a must-have for experienced players or a great entry point for brand new ones. Unmatched Houdini vs. The Genie is available right now for pre-order at RestorationGames.com. So follow the link in this video's description to pre-order from Restoration Games and get a free Houdini foil promo card to make your own magical tricks. I mean, illusions. I do think my light stopped flickering, so that's good for all of us. <laughs> if you like thinky games, but don't always have time for a long thinky gaming session, you may be interested in Monique and Naveen's next pick, Terra Nova, which is a simplified version of the strategy game Terra Mystica. In this version, up to four players each control one of 10 factions, each with different abilities. Compete against one another to explore new territories in peaceful competition, construct buildings, and achieve certain goals from round to round. Use your faction's special abilities in a clever way to control the largest territory. Just like our recently acquitted sponsor, Rinquist Superstores. Rinquist Superstores. We may control more territory than the government of Quebec, but honestly, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, we thought so. And now, here's Monique and Naveen with why they picked Terra Mystica. With why they picked Terra Mystica. It's wrong in my script. I just want everyone to know that. <laughs> and now, here's Monique and Naveen with why they picked Terra Nova. I should have given this a stronger proofread before starting to film. We are both big fans of Terra Mystica and Gaia Project, but we know how overwhelming they each can be. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to see what Terra Nova brings and how simplified the gameplay can be. Yeah, so every time I relearn Gaia Project, because we have to pull it off the shelf after a couple months, I'm always overwhelmed with like, okay, what do I know about this game? How can I do better than I did last time? I always feel like I'm starting at ground zero every time. So right. I'm very interested to see how this one's going to go. I know for me, a uh, personal strategy is I get very, very well accustomed to my individual uh, asymmetric faction that mm -hmm. I'm going to be. I really need to know the pathways to victory as well as what is my unique special thing that's going to help me try to do as best as I can in the game. So we'll see if you can apply that strategy to Terra Nova, right? No idea. Amelia's Secret, in addition to being a knockoff chain of substandard undergarment stores, is also a real-time horror-themed card game that uses augmented reality and a free companion app. I have it right here. 
By placing certain marker cards in specific locations around the room, players can then use a device to scan each marker to display the room's 3D objects, such as a magical mirror or a sink full of blood, you know, things you'd otherwise have to rent. It also builds itself as an escape game, meaning that players must decipher enigmas and use objects to solve puzzles, all within a certain time limit before the mansion they're trapped in seals them in forever. I picked this one because it's one of the only games I brought home from Essen. I love being immersed in a narrative and I felt that way immediately when I tried the demo of this game at Essen. I had to bring home my own copy to play through. Not only to enjoy the story, but because there's currently no North American distributor for the game yet, not even Rinquist Superstores. Rinquist Superstores, the only thing we can't sell you is love because that would be illegal. Rodney returns with his next pick, Trick Shot 2nd Edition, a tense, tactical, fast-paced game of ice hockey with cool plastic miniatures and a streamlined rule set. This sounds cool. This game aims to strike a fine balance between luck and strategy while still being easy. It's still easy to explain and get to the table. It's what I'm trying to say. Use smart positioning, special abilities of your skaters, and press your luck to outplay your opponent and score the most goals. It's hockey for your table, like air hockey. Except not, because trick shot is completely different than air hockey in almost every way. I mean, it's spelled differently for starters. I don't have any sports games, or at least not many. I should be careful. There's probably like five of them behind me right now. No, I don't think so. But the point is, I'm not typically drawn to sports board games. And I can't really blame that on not really being a sports guy myself because I've got about 58 trading in the Mediterranean games and I wouldn't say I have this burning passion for importing and exporting in the old world. So I can't really use my lack of sports passion as an excuse. And if you think about it, sports very much are a game themselves. So I should be into sports more, or at the very least, sports board games. And I'm Canadian, so a hockey board game would make sense for me, don't you think? When I first saw Trick Shot, I thought maybe it didn't take the sport seriously due to the cartoony art style, but friends of the show, Jamie Kay gave the Secret Cabal Game podcast and Joel Eddy of Drive Thru Games both said it's a very good game. And at around the same time I was questioning my lack of sports games in my collection, this second edition showed up on GameFound. Now, I know this new edition isn't available yet. So sharing this means if you also have an interest, you might have to wait for a copy, but I won't leave you waiting alone. I'm backing it too, and I'll be waiting right along with you, right here, in this room, until it arrives. I should have brought a sandwich. And the game making the biggest blips on our radars this month is Fork, a two to six player trick-taking game that Matthew and I unknowingly both picked. Fork stands for Fox, Owl, Rabbit, Kale, as the goal of the game is to capture animals or kale in the food chain. In the game, players take turns leading the trick. The active player calls the suit, which is a type of terrain, and then players follow, playing kale cards face up and everything else face down. After all players have played a card, reveal all cards, and resolve from the highest number to the lowest, and as an added twist, there can be more than one player scoring each card per trick. This is another game that we got to play at Essen. It's a wonderful food chain style trick taking card game where you're aiming to win and collect the surviving cards to make sets, which is a simple way of saying that this game fills me with joy. Also, because playing it reminds me that as a human person, I personally have escaped the food chain. Now, instead of being possibly eaten by a lion, the only thing I have to worry about is falling face first into a wheat threshing machine. And I like those odds. Uh, as for me, all it took was being a new trick-taking game from Tate Wu that has cute animals and a rock, paper, scissors. Twist, yes please. This is the other game I came home from Essen with. This is an early copy though. It's coming to Kickstarter in January. So if it sounds interesting to you, keep an eye out for it. And if you need to stock up on rock, paper, or scissors, be sure to visit Rinquist Superstores. Rinquist Superstores. Find us now on Twitter, because we refuse to not be part of the problem. Until next time, thanks for watching.